Sigma Sports headquarters, but as you can see, we're clad in some cycling kit because we're doing a bike fit special. Lucy's here, Jimmy's here. You're going to be the expert when you are. You're not going to be an expert. You're already an expert on bike fits. We've got lots of questions that have already come in, so thanks very much for them. Before we start, we've got a little preemptive video to show you, and then we'll start with the questions good and proper. My name's Jimmy, I'm one of the bike fitters here at Sigma Sports. I first came across bike fitting when I was working at a shop in, in Boston back, well, probably nearly 20 years ago now. And they were using fitting there as a way uh, both of sizing people and designing custom bikes, but also as a way of enhancing people's experience on the bikes that they had already. And that's what really kind of captured my imagination, I think, is the idea of helping people enjoy their bikes more. When I came back to England, eventually, I trained as a fitter properly using the the specialized DG Fit system first, and then I also trained on the Trek Precision Fit Protocol too. Since then, I've done quite a lot of work with pro teams, specifically Trek Drops and the Matrix Volpine team. Eight years full-time fitting is probably more accurate. Uh, so I would say, yeah, two and a half to three thousand fits. So probably the most rewarding ones are the ones where I've helped people to return to activity of some sort after being. Well, cracking, cracking little, little video there. That was the first time I've actually seen that. I didn't even know it was going to take place. That's the beauty of live. But without further ado, we've got loads of questions. Thanks again for putting your questions in. Shall we get cracking with the questions, Lucy? Yeah. So the first one is from Mark on Instagram, and they want to know what are the general basics of a bike fit. So. What happens uh, during a bike fit? So the most important thing is to get to know the rider and know what they kind of riding they like to do, what they want to be doing, maybe in six months or a year's time. Um, talk about injuries, that's really important when we're working out what position to put someone in on, on the bike. Um, so we take a full injury history. And then it's really important to work out what the rider's body can do in terms of range of movement and flexibility. So we do a, a full uh, objective examination. So we, we, we screen for you know, problems with hip flexion and hamstring length. And once we've got all that data, then we'll switch to the jig and look at them riding, take some video, yep. uh, do some saddle pressure mapping, look at joint angles and uh, make any changes we think would be beneficial to help them ride longer and, and faster. And so how long will one of these ordinarily take? Uh, we allow three hours, so wow. yeah, quite a long time. Uh, but sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll focus quite a lot on one area, so it might be foot control, so we might make footbeds. It might be problems with saddle pressure or saddle choice, so we might spend more time on that, but generally about three hours for the whole thing. Yeah, I guess when people come in, they might have certain issues that need kind of looking at compared to others, so with certain people, you spend more time on the Yeah, the, 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 the session is steered by the, the, the rider's needs, really, so we, we, we come up with a plan quite early on in the session and, and, and try and stick to it. So, so if, if I was, was coming with the rear first time, we'd need an extra two hours, hours to go through this, is that what you're saying? At least an extra two hours, yeah, yeah possibly longer. Yeah. Well, next question. question. Awesome. Um, so this is from Leggy McLegs. Leggy McLegs. <laughs> what a cracking name. That's, That's a great name. name. Uh, they want to know, is there a special formula for determining the right saddle? Or do I just have to keep trying new saddles? They've had all three of the main shapes of the saddle from physique, in both narrow and wide. And even played with open versions, but um, they've not been successful in finding the correct saddle. So, uh, yeah, any kind of... Yeah, what's the best way? The it's important to uh, have the saddle in the correct position for a start. You know, there's no point in putting 10 different saddles in the same wrong position because you'll just interact with it in the same way and probably get the same issues. So um, getting the saddle in the correct position is, is, is key. Um, in terms of choosing the correct saddle, um, flexibility is important. So some people will naturally rotate their pelvis forward more, so they might benefit from a saddle that has a cut out in the middle. Yep. Uh, some people sit in a more upright position because they're less flexible in the lower back. So in that case, they might be better with a saddle which is a little bit more scooped in shape. Um, so it's a question of thinking about your flexibility, maybe getting someone to have a look at it for you, um, maybe take photographs of, of you from the side to assess lower back flexibility and making a decision based on that. 
obviously the best way is to come and see me or you know a fitter just to so that you can try different things and, and use something like the pressure mapping to work out which one's the best. I mean just, just looking at things from a little bit of an old, old school perspective people ask me in the past that uh, they always get you know, an aching backside with mm -hmm. riding and then you find out that they just don't ride very often. Quite often yeah, yeah. people do need to get used yeah. to riding and I know that sounds Absolutely. Obvious, but there is that as well that doesn't have riding done. Absolutely yeah so it might be better for someone who doesn't ride very much um, you know in terms of their volume if they do two or three hours on a Sunday then it might be better for them for them to have a more padded saddle um, or even you know better shorts can really help or more sure. padded shorts let's say can, can really help with that as well but if you're riding a lot and you've got time to get used to the you know inevitable unavoidable sit bone pressure then it's better to have something that does a better job at stabilizing the pelvis it's really important to keep the pelvis stable nice. so we've got one here nice. Nice. do you want to get on the bike can i wear yeah. this off yeah. this? Yeah. Look at this. Just jump on the yeah, like Let's do the pressure map while she's sitting there. Yeah, we're going to do a bit of pressure mapping. So the pressure map basically... Actually, do you want to explain to me, or explain to the, to the viewers, exactly yeah. what pressure mapping is? So you can, on, on the screen you can see uh, where, uh, how Lucy is interacting with the saddle. So you can see where the pressure is and also how it moves. Um, so we can, we can capture what's going on there and then the technology will give us a uh, an, an average of where the pressure is and also show us how, how Lucy's pelvis is moving so you can see at the moment there's quite a lot of uh, there's quite a lot of pelvic movement but the, the most important thing is that there's not much pressure straight down the middle so you've got good skeletal contact there I'm just going to get you to stand up for a second Lucy's just going to straighten the pad cool yep yeah, sit down again and then that should be a little bit better take another capture there I'm earning my current. You are definitely earning. We are heading for a post YouTube cover of this. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. One of the problems with Lucy is that she doesn't weigh enough. Um, but we're getting, you know, getting a pretty good pressure map there. Um, it's going to work better with Matt for sure, um, for obvious reasons. But is uh, it, we're getting a pretty good pressure map there. You can see now that they've got the pad straight, and the, the centre of pressure is closer to the middle of the saddle, and also that line, that red line, which shows the pelvic movement, is more horizontal than it was before. So. And remind me what saddle we put on this bike before. That's, uh, this is a specialised Mimic. That okay, so that's yeah. what actually I, I yeah. have on my, my bike yeah. currently. And this is pretty close to the fit that you ride yeah. on the road, not a million miles away. So is that the first thing that you'll do, um, is to check the pressure? Is there any particular order that you'll do one of these fits in? This, the on-the-bike part of the fit is actually, it doesn't actually take a, a huge amount of the, of the session. So it's normally about half an hour, 45 minutes actually on the bike. By the time we get to this point, We've got so much information about the rider that actually what the decisions we make on the jig are actually quite straightforward and we validate them using the, using the technology, including the, the, the motion capture that we, that we use um, in, in order to look at joint angles. Okay, okay. Now, another, another question, question that's, that's come in, this is from Alex, quite, quite a simple question. question. How, How often should you get a bike fit? Um, well, whenever, whenever you need one, really, is the, is the unhelpful answer. But, it, but when, when it, when it, whenever anything changes, so if you're thinking about increasing the volume of your riding, or if you're, you've had an injury, or if you're going to uh, do a different type of riding, so you're going to start doing time trials or, or triathlon, then obviously the fit will be very different from your road bike fit. So when you're going to change disciplines or change the type of riding that you do, it's important to do that. And also if you've had some, some time off, so we have a lot of customers here who are returning to cycling, they might have ridden a lot when they were younger. Yep. So if you're returning to cycling after, you know, whatever, five, ten years off, then it's really, really important to get a bike fit before you kind of throw yourself back into, you know, 15 hour weeks and um, all, all that kind of mischief. So, uh, but yeah, it's funny, you just segue nicely into the next question from Maddie. Should, should you get, get a bike fit after a rest period? period? I'm assuming that's a relatively long period off the bike, or is, or is it better, better to have ridden relatively recently, so I think you can answer that one. Yeah, a, a, bit, a bit of both really. It's much better to kind of uh, start with a, with a clean slate and get everything right from the start, but obviously we need, uh, we need some feedback about how, how, you know, any problems that might exist on the, on the bike already. So yeah, some, some riding experience and something to come with the session to talk about in terms of injuries and discomfort is, is, is always useful. And, and bike fits are incredibly popular now. I mean, there seem to be a proliferation of, of, of a companies doing bike fits. What's, what's the kind of feedback, feedback you've had of riders that have come, come to you, you've, you've sorted them out? I mean, what's, what's the flip side to you when, when they come back? Do people, people come back to you and say, wow, this has really changed, changed, uh, changed the way Yeah, the, quite, quite often. I mean, I always ask for feedback um, and quite often we will do follow-up sessions with people. So it, it might be, you know, it depends on the volume of riding or what we've done during the fit, but it could be three months or six months down the line and people actually come back and will reassess flexibility and range of movement and, and maybe make some changes to the, the position as well. 
But generally, um, people have very positive uh, feedback. And, but occasionally, obviously, as with anything, we do encounter problems further down the line. But uh, the, you know, part of the bike fit process is fixing those things as they, as they occur. But generally, the feedback is really good. Another question here from Instagram. This is Andy who asks, what's the most common bike fit problem that you tend to come across before I hand the tag back to Lisa? Uh, it, it's probably, it's probably knee, knee pain is probably one of the main ones and, and, and saddle discomfort, so right. saddle pressure, so, so numbness and saddle sores, chafing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, but knee pain is probably the, the, the most common kind of uh, complaint that, we're, that, that we get and the thing that we uh, spend most time trying to, trying to fix, I think, in a bike fit situation. But a lot of people come with no issues at all, just want to optimise the position. I mean, I, I guess, again, just thinking off the top of my head, I, I'd imagine a lot of people coming into the sport quite new who have gone for kind of, uh, you know, click to pedals, mm -hmm. uh, I guess problems quite often originate from an incorrect setup. If, you, if you've got no kind of guidance point, that's where I guess a lot of problems come yeah, from. Yeah, 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 definitely. If you're, if you're new to clipless um, and it, it's super important to get the, the foot in the right position, but that it kind of leads on to what's happening to the foot inside the shoe as well, because that's really, really important. Quite often people will change cleat position as a response to what the foot is doing inside the shoe. So we, we focus uh, a lot on keeping the foot stable in the shoe sure. and that can, uh, that can really help with cleat position. Cool. I'm going to hop down here so I feel like... <laughs> so I hop on. Are you getting on? Yeah. Um, here we go. This is actually live question. This is from Ishan Al-Arifin. Thanks so much for getting in contact with us. Matt is riding with a lower saddle rider than most pro riders. That's pretty true. true. Um, is, it, is it from pro fitting or personal feel? That's a question for me. I've, I've never, never had, had a pro bike, bike fit. Now, a, a few years ago, we did have a look at the problem with my knee, knee didn't we? Yep. Ten years yeah, ago, when I rode for Sigma Sports yeah. quite a long time ago. Um, and, and that, that definitely helped, helped. But I've never had a pro bike, bike fit. And that, given the game weighs too much, we are going to do a video in the future with me getting a bike fit. We'll move on. But my position is basically just a position that I've kind of adapted over the years. And I'm, I'm 49 now, and I'm sitting higher than ever. And we'll talk about that again. But my position is basically me. Um, and uh, just looking at other people and kind of doing what feels right. I mean, especially, I guess that's something that you come across that's quite common, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you couldn't have done what you what you did on the bike if the, if your position was something must have been reasonably right. Yeah, exactly. Guess, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. And and some some people are very sensitive to uh, to position and to small changes in the position, and other other people can pretty much get on with whatever position you put them in. So you might sure. be you know at that end of the spectrum. Yeah, I have heard that the body is remarkably adaptive. I mean, yeah, people yeah. can actually generate a lot of power yeah. even if they're in a relatively inefficient position. Yeah. Now, this, it, I, I do love this jig. It's so cool. Um, oh, yeah? I've got a little drill at the back to make me go higher one more move. Look at this. We can play it out. Higher. higher. And then, then the longer up front. This is fantastic. I'm just going to have a bit of a spin while you answer the next uh, question, Luz. Cool. So the next question is actually from Adam Blythe. Oh, Blythe, okay, yeah. great stuff. Um, so he commented asking, aero, comfort, power, question mark, what should you base your fits on? Uh, really good question. Depend, depends on the rider, completely depends on the rider. Um, so you, you, there's, there's not much point in making someone super aero if they're not riding very fast. Um, obviously aero, uh, the importance of aero in, increases massively with, with, with speed. So we would focus on, on comfort for, for, for most people and comfort equals speed because the more comfortable you are, the harder you can push and the longer you can ride for. And most people are interested in, in completing whatever ride they've got, you know, their, their ride for, for the year or their, you know, whatever, their, their, their trip to New York. They're inter interested in completing that without, they want to enjoy it and not get injured. Sure. So for those people, it's more about comfort. But for people who race, obviously, it's all about speed. And for, for time trial, it's even more all about speed. So. I suppose the, yeah, I suppose, sorry Lucy, I suppose it's the, it's the balance, isn't it, um, for, for a 25 mile time trial, mm -hmm. it's going to be, firstly it's uncomfortable because the amount of power you're putting out anyway, yeah, yeah. but um, you just have to get used to holding yourself in a relatively yeah, uncomfortable yeah. position as long as it doesn't compromise too much the amount of power that you're putting out. Yeah, as long as the, the, you will lose power in a more aero position, you know, nearly always because the hip's more closed, but if that loss in power is offset by the, the, the benefit that you get from being smaller from the front, so being more aero, then, then, it's, then it's worth it. But those, those, those gains don't really start to make a big difference until you're kind of at speeds, you know, 45, 50 k an hour, you know, is where it really, really kicks in. So for a, you know, for a short time trial, that's, that's, it's definitely worth it.
good stuff. Cool. Cheers, Adam. Should we look at... Um, Oh, now, now yeah, yeah. Now look at my, my yeah. awesome impression. Let me just get your bottom straight. Just stand up for a second. Cool, okay, yep, sit down. So basically what you're looking at on YouTube for the very first time, as far as I'm aware of, is the map of my backside on the saddle. And this is the first time I've seen it. Um, yeah, that's saddle map. Yeah, that's saddle map. I mean, there we go, that's me, uh, live. Uh, I wouldn't that's great. It's kind of obviously I'm favouring the right side. But You're favouring the right side. Yeah. I'm a bit yeah, yeah. more on the outside. And we know we know that there's something going on with that left with that left knee. Uh, yeah. we, we've, we've discussed already. So there's 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 quite a bit of work to do there. But we, we can uh, we can definitely we can definitely fix that. Right. So I mean, it's taken quite a bit of work. So uh, what is the problem there? I mean, we're, we're all kind of built. None of us are symmetrical. No, right? correct. So yeah, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. What, what kind of work would you say we would need to do without dwelling on it too much? So, the, 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 the pressure isn't very even left and right, and you can see that the bony contact on the left is, is quite close to the edge of the saddle. So, okay. you know, the, the, what, what could happen there is that there could be some saddle soreness on, on, on that side. Equally, there could be some uh, excess kind of bony pressure on the, on, on the right side as well. And you can see that the, the pelvis doesn't move symmetrically. Um, so that's one of the things that we'd, we'd focus on, and we can do that with, uh, you know, doing some stuff with your, with your feet, um, but also, sat, I think for you, saddle choice is going to be really important. Okay. We need to ideally um, have these areas of contact um, extended so that we can be sure that we've got a, the maximum amount of pelvic uh, the skeletal contact between you and the saddle. Um, and the more contact we have, and the more diffuse the pressure is, then the more comfortable you'll be and the more stable you'll be. So that's, that's what we'll... Didn't know any of this. That's what we'll work on. It's all new. I might have to start racing again when I'm on pack 52. <laughs> What's the space? What's the space? Anyway, next up. Okay. Um, so, the next one is a YouTube live question that has okay. just been asked on the chat. So this is from Paul Frey, and he's saying... Well, he's asking, does... Bike fit, does, does a bike fit encompass cleat float and uh, its effect on knee pain? Ooh, good question. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. A cleat fit is an integral part of the, of the fitting process. So what, we'd, what we would probably do, depend, it depends on, on the customer, but probably what we would do is look at, uh, we'd measure, measure the feet and look at foot stability first and then move on to cleat position after we've made sure the foot was as stable as possible. But yeah, absolutely. Cleat, cleat position is very important. So, so would you, I mean, just to dwell on that question a bit longer, would you, looking at some, the, the way somebody sits on the bike, the way somebody pedals, the kind of biomechanics of it all, would you recommend a pedal system? Because the, the different pedal systems that offer the same thing, but others offer quite a, a lot more float, a lot less float, don't they? Yeah, it, it's unusual that we have uh, someone who, who kind of, you know, needs a particular pedal, but we can make recommendations based on their, what they're going to use it for. Right. Um, and people just have, a lot of people just have a preference, you know, some people have, you know, grown up racing on Speedplay, so that's what they always prefer, and Speedplay sure. have got quite a different feel to most of the pedal formats. Most of the other ones are pretty similar. Um, some pedals uh, give you options in terms of stance width, so some pedals give you a different axle length, so Shimano, um, and also speed play. So people who need uh, a particular stance width, a particular distance between their feet, uh, some pedal formats will cater for them better than, than others, so that might be a way to, to make that choice. Fair enough. Good stuff. Cool. Another question from uh, the YouTube Live. Keep them coming in. We have around 10 minutes left. Stuff. It's gone really quick. It right? has, yeah. yeah. I've learned loads already. <laughs> Um, so this is from uh, Jeffy Anderson, I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, what happens if your frame size is slightly too big or slightly too small? Is there kind of an ideal solution, I guess? Um, you can accommodate a kind of you know incorrect frame size by obviously by changing the extremities of the bike so with stem length and obviously you know seat post setback for if you had a really small frame then you could probably make the, the fit work um, by having a longer stem or, or a, a saddle with more of a setback but it might turn out that your your range of movement and your flexibility will uh, kind of push you towards a frame which might be considered a little bit too big or a little bit too small um, because there's no such such thing as the you know the average person. So whatever we do in terms of fitting um, on a stock frame that's a particular geometry, um, we have to use those bits of the bike to make it make it right. So everybody, in a sense, is on a frame that's too big and too small or too small. Sure, sure. 
Uh, have you ever had somebody in who you've actually had to recommend that you need to get a bigger or smaller bike? Because I guess if somebody's going to spend the time and the cash to come here and, uh, and pay for your services, they're kind of pretty serious about their bike riding. So I, I guess ultimately there's some time to time you're going to need to do that. We do, we do that quite, and it's quite, quite, it happens quite often actually. A lot of, a lot of people buy, buy bikes uh, without actually having seen them. Um, online it's quite easy to do now. Um, sure. And sometimes we have to have an awkward conversation, you know, quite early on in the fit very often um, yeah. you know about the, the, the frame size not being not being right um, but everybody um, there's a kind of ideal frame geometry for everybody but that geometry may not exist in, in you know in stock frames so that would be a, a time when we'll be talking about custom yeah. custom frames which we do as well nice. Um, cool, we were going to head back to another YouTube question actually. Um, so this is from River Phillips, uh, they're asking, is there anything that you can't solve with a bike fit and you can only try by riding? You never really know uh, for sure if the position is going to work until you actually do use it for what you want to use it for on the road. So, yeah. you know, I don't know from a three hour session if it's going to work definitely for a 100 mile ride at a particular power output. Yeah. So yeah, there's, the, the, there's some stuff we have to test in the real world, which is why we're keen to get feedback from riders after they've uh, tried the fit for, for a while. Um, and there's, there's some, there are some kind of morphological you know, issues that we encounter through bike fitting that we can't, we can't fix. So we would refer to a physio or an osteo or you know, a podiatrist or, or whatever. So we do come across things that we can't, you know, we can't get around with bike fit. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess, guess it comes, comes down, down to the good, good thing about having a bike fit is you're in this control environment mm -hmm. where we can kind of set up people's current fit on, on this and then, um, you know, work through. We can keep all the conditions the same by trying yeah, yeah. different saddle. You know, it's a lot easier than at home trying to kind of either yeah. do it on your turbo or do it, go for a ride. Takes, takes the guesswork out of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's kind of, a, you know, that's the good thing about about having a bike fit. Yeah. Just a quick question for me, Lise, before we move back onto the iPad again. This, this rig that we're using here, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously just turning the pedals quite loosely here. How much pressure do you put somebody under uh, when going on a bike fit? Uh, let, let's take, for example, your beginner who's just looking at doing a 100 kilometer sportif, and then let's look at somebody who's racing at the elite level. How much, are they gonna be under pressure? I guess you need to factor that in It depends, well. I normally, um, it depends on the rider, but I normally would, um, ask them to, to, to get to a kind of five out of 10 effort initially, just so yeah. we can use that as a kind of control. So that would be an intensity that you could pretty much ride all day. At. Yeah. Um, and we use that as, as the control. And then towards the end of the fit, depending on their aims and goals, then we might just kind of get them up to something closer to race, to race pace. Uh, we've got good air conditioning here and we've got quite a good fan, so we can get sure. people working as hard as they want to really. A lot of people who race or, um, you know, take their riding quite seriously are keen to, you know, show what they can do in here. So, that we, you know, we just let them, let them do what they want to do. Because, I mean, again, going back to my racing days, I mean, from riding along at a steady state that you can ride all day, you know, that it's completely different when you're, when you're riding on the limit um, or you're doing a time trial. I mean, the, the way you sit on a bike is completely different, so that kind of needs to be factored in. Yeah, we, we, we encounter that quite a lot, especially with time trial setup, um, which is why it's really important to get feedback from the, from the rider after they've, you know, after they've left the fit studio and they go out and ride the position. Like you said, as soon as you're pushing at race pace, everything kind of, you know, contracts a little bit. Kind of slide forward yeah. a bit, and all sorts yeah. of things that go yeah. on, especially with me. Yeah. I've got left sat, sat about that much saddle on me. Anyway, that's about me. Back to the questions again. Okay, uh, so this is from Fraser on Instagram and they want to know any advice on lower back pain linked to hamstring tightness? Uh, yeah, I mean that's a rider, uh, I mean, we can accommodate that in a bike fit situation, so you know, if, if, if tight or short, functionally short hamstrings are causing lower back discomfort, which can happen because it kind of pulls the pelvis back underneath you, then we can accommodate that in a bike fit situation by just by having the front end really high, but you know, nobody wants to ride in that kind of position. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a rider issue, we can, we can advise on, on ways to improve hamstring flexibility and, and you know, in some cases we can refer to, we've got quite a good referral network here in terms of uh, physios and osteos so we can refer people out so that they can get that issue fixed and then we can follow up with them and see if it's improved. So kind of, so kind of everything you need is kind of here at the Sigma Sports, yeah. obviously you've got the expertise on, on the shop floor yeah. in relation to the, to the bikes yep. and you've got obviously experts on bike fit and also people can sort out any yeah. other kind of issues that, you know. Yeah. The, the other thing about lower back pain, actually, uh, uh, just thinking uh, while you were talking then, is that it's quite often linked with pelvic stability. So if you're not stable on the pelvis, then that 
quite, can quite often result in lower back discomfort. So you were talking about earlier on when you, when, you, when you were racing, you'd end up on the nose of the saddle. When you're on the nose of the saddle, then it's difficult to keep the pelvis as stable as it would be if sure. you had good skeletal contact there. So if you routinely sit on the nose of the saddle, even when you're not pushing that hard, then you know, you're going to have problems with the saddle. But also, it may lead to lower back discomfort as well because the pelvis moves too much. I, th I think that's a combination of sitting in a very old school laid back position as well. As yeah, I said, there's a trend, but more and more elite level pros of both male and female have the saddle a little bit further forward than we used to see kind of 20 years ago so uh, and mine has moved forward a little bit as well so that is less of an issue but, uh, we've got some more questions coming in yeah it's been cracking we've got to wrap this up very very soon we are live in the single sports fit we are just a reminder yeah the, the third one in the series and uh, yeah uh, it's been pretty good so far I've, I've enjoyed it really i actually got some training in not against much resistance but you know Everyone can make it a bit harder for you. Um, oh, sorry, let's get another one in. So, yeah, just the last couple of questions before we unfortunately have to wrap things up. I'm going to clip out because I'm worried that my head's been out of shot. We've just been speaking to like this disembodied, floating kind of map, but I'm back on ground level now. Okay, so, um, question from Matt on Facebook. Is this you? It's, it's not me, but it's one of the mates that yeah. I paid a couple of quid to call in. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Um, would, would you recommend, recommend a bike fit to be done, done periodically as opposed to early on? So, um, so saying, you know, your body can kind mm -hmm. of change, you adapt to a different position and yep. um, adjustments might need to be made further down the line. Yeah. I, think, I think if you're, if, you're, uh, if you're quite a high volume, high mileage rider, um, then it's important to check the position. Um, you know, some people come back every six months. It might even be less than that. At the, you know, the, more, more frequent than that at the, at the start of their kind of ramping up the, the, the mileage. So things things can change quite rapidly, and especially if we're looking at people who've got specific you know issues in terms of flexibility and they're having some treatment or some help from a third party in terms of improving that. Then it's really important to reassess them in a bike fit situation and, and see what those you know improvements uh, might have might have done to their position on the bike okay so yeah um so last literally your last couple if you want to fire any more this is your very very last chance uh so this is from instagram does a physiotherapist check uh what if it sorry does a physiotherapist check let me do that again what if the physiotherapist check uh, help increase the quality of a bike fitting. Yeah, for sure. We, we, we do um, a, 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 an objective physical evaluation, which um, is a, a series of uh, range of movement tests, which, which are used by physios. So although I'm not a physio, I know quite a lot about a very, very tiny area uh, that relates to cycling. So the tests that we do, which we'll, we'll, we'll probably see um, at some point with Matt, um, are focused on working out exactly um, how the bike, how the body can work on the bike. And we're, we're, we're interested in the, in, in, in the limit of like hip flexion range and, sure. and hamstring flexibility as well. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, you know, when we do that screening, that's a good, good place. If we see anything that isn't kind of within the normal range, that's a good point to kind of refer people on to get stuff fixed that isn't quite right. Yeah. yeah. Just one little question for me, if that's just, just to maybe wrap things up. I'm going to go slightly over, but uh, core work. Mm -hmm. Again, everybody seems to be doing core work now. If you're looking at somebody who's kind of relatively new to the sport, was having problems on the bike, would you always recommend core work to augment you know, a correct yeah. position on the bike, just to kind of stay light. It's, it's, re it's really, really important, um, but you have to have a solid platform for that core to kind of uh, extend from. So there's no point in having a, you know, a, a, a really, really strong core if you're sitting right on the tip of the saddle. Um, yeah. You need to have your pelvis planted properly on the saddle, and then the core kind of projects the torso out in front of the, uh, over the front of the bike. So it's, it's key. Yeah, core is really important, but it's, in, it's important to have a firm basis for that core as well. Great stuff. Well, well Jimmy, it's, it's been fascinating. That hour and, well, well, half an hour and a bit has absolutely whizzed by. Yeah. Thanks, thanks very much, Lucy. Lucy. Jimmy, Jimmy, thanks again. And thanks for, for all of your questions. Um, I've, I've no doubt, doubt we might be doing, doing another one of these uh, in the not too distant future. future. We're certainly doing a lot more YouTube lives, that is for sure. But for now, from Sigma Sports headquarters, from Jimmy, from Lucy, and from me, Matt Stevens, it's good night. Goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you very much.